Hi. Last video, we talked a little bit about the history of probability and statistics. And I gave you some pointers to the main ideas that uh, were there. Now I would like to put these things together with the timeline so that you can have a better sense about how probability and statistics um, developed over the years. So let's look at this poster. This is um, a short history of probability and statistics. And uh, much of it is based on uh, this book by Ian Hacking, uh, The Emergence of Probability. OK, so if you're interested in more, you can uh, go read this book. It's an excellent book. So um, as we said in the last uh, video, um, there are two parts to, um, to probability and statistics. And um, the two threads uh, are repeated games of chance, on the one hand, and the strength of evidence and degrees of belief on the other. So that's the two arrows, the red one going down and the green one going down. And time goes in this direction. Okay, So this is as time progresses. And uh, statistics and probability in its modern form um, is pretty much agreed to be uh, starting at the time of um, Pascal and Fermat um, that um, were two mathematicians in 1654. And in these correspondences, uh, the main ideas were laid out. Of course, there were other people involved. But the main interesting thing is around 1650 is when modern uh, mathematical probability and statistics started to, um, started to uh, be developed. OK, so, so that's the timeline that we have with the blue line. All right, so let's look a little bit from what happened before that point. So before that point, you had um, repeated games of chance. So those were games played with different uh, things like uh, uh, knuckle bones um, and dice and cards. And, um, and those uh, raised questions of the type of when, uh, is, what is the right way to split the money when you stop a game early. So that um, is the the part of statistics that we will actually deal with quite a lot in the beginning, which has to do with games of chance. The other part that is much less well defined, but um, probably even more important, is what do we do when we have um, a state of uncertainty? We have some evidence towards um, some conclusions, but we are not sure. Uh, how to weigh different evidences that might be contradictory. So these kind of things uh, come up in um, law. So here is the law. It comes up in medicine. And it comes up in science and later on technology. Basically, in modern science and technology, probability and statistics are, um, are necessary Part. Now, in public policy, it's also a necessary part. Okay, so those things existed from before. And um, um, in these correspondences, um, Pascal and Fermat also related to them. But it's important to remember that these two things are quite different from each other. One is about evidence and about how people think about evidence, and the other is much more mechanic, mechanical. Okay, so. It has to do with uh, rolling dice and so on. So of course, the um, rolling of dice um, did not stop at uh, that point. Uh, we have casinos also now. And so these questions are uh, natural. But um, um, and, and these questions give rise to uh, the frequentist approach to probability and statistics uh, that was described in the other video. And the uh, best-known champion of uh, frequentist statistics is Andrei Kolmogorov, uh, one of the great mathematicians from Russia. And he invented what's called the axioms of probability. Okay, so, so he was central to, to, to this uh, view. And in a more recent um, current um, 
still alive is Vladimir Vapnik, who has developed some of the foundations for um, machine learning. Okay, so this is about the frequentist. Now, in the other direction, in the side of uh, evidence and degrees of belief, um, there was a different line of development, which is called Bayesian statistics. And we will talk also about that in a later time, in which you take your belief before you see the evidence and you update them when you see the evidence. And the champion of that was Bruno uh, De Finetti. Okay, so um, you have um, the, on the one side this Bayesian statistics approach, and on the other side the frequentist uh, approach, and there is definitely a tension between the two. So this is a pretty famous picture by now of Vapnik standing around uh, next to a board, and and in the board it says, all your bays are belong to us. Okay, so this is a clear uh, slight of uh, Bayesian statistics. All right, but then what develops over time is people that are statistics practitioners, people that uh, actually use probability and statistics um, in order to solve real world problems. And I draw them in the middle here, the practitioners, because um, they, are in general not dogmatic to one side or the other. They would use Bayesian statistics when it's appropriate, frequentist statistics when it's appropriate, and um, other heuristics when that's appropriate. Okay, so um, the father of those methods is uh, Ronald Fisher, uh, who has brought statistics to uh, the sciences and also to the social sciences. And um, and then more recent ones are uh, uh, John Tukey, and uh, even more recent is Leo Breiman, the inventor of uh, bagging and cart and other important algorithms. Okay, so, um, so just to add a little bit, there is this area that we will also talk about uh, called hypothesis testing and p-values, which is the frequentist approach to arguing about degrees of belief. Okay, so it's, uh, it's an interesting uh, contrast, and um, the, this actual approach is now very, very commonly used in science to accept or reject papers according to the strength of the evidence that they have. Um, and as I said before, um, these middle ones are the practitioners. They, uh, I drew different colored arrows in all kinds of ways because they're each unique. They, they, they take various ideas from probability and statistics and they apply it to real problems in uh, their own unique way. So the modern um, version of these uh, practitioners is today is machine learning, okay? And uh, even more recently, big data, when we try to apply machine learning methods to big data. So let's zoom out and to see the complete picture. And um, what um, uh, was important for me to show you here is that um, uh, while the methods that, that people are more uh, familiar today with are like uh, machine learning, big data, and neural networks, um, are, are very popular. There is actually a very long history, and uh, in this long history, uh, people developed a lot of very important methods that are worthwhile knowing about. Okay, so um, uh, I hope that that gives you a perspective that will be useful for you for the rest of the course. Thank you very much.